Good morning, Rock Church. My brothers and sisters on YouTube and Twitter. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson on this terrific Tuesday. That's right. This is terrific Tuesday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Brothers and sisters, good to be with you all this morning. It's good to have just a sense of purpose in our lives. And I know, man, there are things that happen in our lives that take our purpose and our plans away, but God's still able. Come on, somebody. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, bless you on this day. We thank you that you've given us life and breath this day. God, we ask that you will just order our steps and our stops, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way. Open our minds. Give us deeper insight and wisdom and revelation, God, that we may be able to do what you call us to do out of a pure heart, a willingness heart, God, not under compulsion. So, God, we give ourselves to you at this moment. Have your way in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Amen, amen. All right, all right. We on, we on. Okay, so yesterday we talked about just looking at how Paul's life was and uh, the things he endured, encountered, and still knew that God loved him. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we got to know that. We got to we got to be grounded in that. We got to be grounded in no matter what. So I want y'all to understand something. I want you to put in your head all day to day. I want you to think about that. No matter what, that's all you got to do is just say no matter what. And we're going to fill in the blanks at the end of this sermon. Come on, somebody. So we're going to dive on into this grammar word on this terrific Tuesday. Nothing should separate us from the love of Christ. This is part two. We're in Romans chapter eight, verse 35. So I'm going to ask two questions before we get into that. Two questions I want you to think about. Has there been anybody trying to separate you from your faith in Christ that you're aware of? Somebody trying to separate you from your faith in Christ. Somebody trying to tell you that you ain't a Christian. You ain't the one that people think you are in Christ. Somebody trying to discourage you about your faith. Things that you're putting before people like, hey, man, this is what God has put in my heart to do. And they try to deter you from that. Somebody's trying to steal your hope, y'all. Yeah. You know, you know that God has told you to do something. You know what God is speaking to you. But somebody come along all of a sudden. What's up, Pastor Hanley? All of a sudden, man, you know, the enemy coming at you. See, I'm going to tell you something. You got to be careful. You got to be careful of what you let in your life, who you let in your life. Because if you're not careful, people try to separate you from your faith in Christ. The second question I want to leave you is, do you ever feel like because of the different types of life challenges, life issues, the ongoing suffering, that Christ doesn't love you the way that you want to be loved? Do you feel like, man, it seems like everybody else is making it. Seem like God is answering everybody else's prayers, but you don't feel as though your prayers are being answered. And therefore, you feel a lack of love, a lack of connection with Jesus. So in other words, do you feel separated from his love? Brothers and sisters, let's just be real. Let's just, just think about that. Because if you feel separated from his love, therefore, you may not walk in love. Therefore, you may not walk in faith. You got to be assured. Come on, somebody, Sister Taylor. You got to be assured that, guess what? God loves us. See, let's look at this Roman word, brothers and sisters. And, and, and this Roman word found in Romans chapter 8, verse 35. We're going to study out that piece. We're going to be studying out verse 35 through 39. We're going to look at these verses. And Paul wrote this. And Paul wrote it because he, he understood it. He went through it. And he urges us, the body of Christ, to understand that we'll go through different types of challenges, issues of life in which many, they suffer because of that, right? We're going we're gonna to go through some suffering, but nothing ever going to separate us from the love of Christ. We got to get that. So Paul goes on to say in verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You need to think about that for a moment. Who? shall separate us. Who 
Not what just now. I'm going to show you the what in one second. But who trying to separate you from the love of Christ? Who? What issues? See, it's important you need to think about this because we got some who's out there now. We got some who's out there would try some things, man. Would try some things in your life that you will walk away, okay? I had a young person come to the altar Sunday and they were telling me about the who in the church. That the church was separating her from her love from Christ. The church, and, and she didn't know where she was at, and she didn't know the, the struggle was real. Man, there were people doing tarot cards. There were different people speaking, man, other demonic things in her life. It's some who's out here, y'all. It's some who's out here to come and get you now. It's some who's to bring some doubt in your life. I'm not talking about the what just now. It's some who's out here now. You got to be careful. Who's trying to separate you? Who's telling you that Christ don't love you? Who's telling that you shouldn't be saved? Who's telling that you should not give the church? Who's telling you these things? Who? It's some who's out here. Man, who trying to separate us from the love of Christ? I think sometimes we need to sit down. We need to meditate. We need to think about that. Because there are some who's trying to divide you from the faith that you understand that you have. There's some who's trying to divide your hope that you have. There's some who's trying to discourage you. Who is it? Now, what's the what? Paul, gonna, he going to go into the what. So say, okay, okay, who? All right. That's a question right now. What? Should trouble or hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness, or danger, or sword. I'm trying to separate you from the love of Christ. Those the what? So as Paul writes, and, and, and we, we, we must never interpret the trials of life, the challenges of life, even the who's, even the suffering as evidence of Jesus' lack of love for us. See, it's easy for us to, if we're not careful now, we, we, we will think because what we were going through and what we're going to go through, it's like, hey, Christ don't love me. Or it's, it, it appears that your prayers ain't been answered. They don't delay. God is doing something behind the scenes because he's God. He's Jehovah. He know what to do. He know how to bring us through and what we need to learn as we're going through some of the storms of life, my brothers and sisters, some of the challenges of life. Oh, man, listen here. I come to find out more people, you know, more challenges in life that you deal with with other people. Because, hey, you want to help other people. You want you love people. But don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted at all because what you're going through, amen, that, that does not say Christ has separated himself from us. We need to know that nothing we can do can keep Christ from loving us. It's impossible. It's impossible because Christ is love. It's impossible. And I'm here to tell you, man, I know it's impossible because before yet I was, the Bible said yet before we were even, amen, born, Christ died for us. While we were in sin, Christ died for us. So how all of a sudden things that we go through today make us feel like he separated his love from us? It's a lie. Nothing that happens to us can mean that Christ no longer loves us. Hey, brothers and sisters, look, man. I, man, I wish that I didn't have to have surgery next month, next Monday. I wish there was nothing wrong with my body. I wish that the quality of life that I had twelve weeks ago that I would have today. I deal with stumbling. I deal with you know, my balance and stuff like that. And, and, and I take some medication to help me. And, and I, people don't realize that, but yeah, I know it don't look like it. But boy, look at here, I'm, I'm working hard to stand up. And I realize me sitting down, man, no, I, I, I hurt sometimes when I sit down. Just the very fact when I have to get up, I'm staggering. But see, that's the thing about it. I realize even through my long little 13 weeks of suffering, and I'm suffering because of things I wish I can do. Come on, somebody. And I got some deficiencies in my body I wish I did not have. But Christ still loves me. 
And I can tell you I know Christ loved me, even in the midst of I wish I didn't have to go through it. But God opened up so many different doors. He opened up so many different doors, man, during the stint. Now, I, I, I actually have a surgery date. I've been cleared for surgery. And it's a miracle because guess what? When I first started this 13 weeks ago, then guess what? October the 6th was my first appointment to see a neurologist. Not only I've seen the Roger, I had all doctors for me, I've been cleared for surgery for October the 3rd. And I'm going to tell you something. That's the love of God. And people was telling me, it's a miracle. you lucky that you say, I ain't lucky about nothing. I got the love of Christ in me. Come on, somebody. He's loving me. Yeah, I got to go through some stuff, but he's still loving me. Brothers and sisters, can't nothing separate his love from us. I don't care what you're going to go through. You're going to go through it as long as you live. From the day you die, you're going to go through something because most people you know, most stuff you're going to go through with them. Hey, you keep living. They say you keep living. You're going to go through something. Just, 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 just keep on living. And watch what I tell you. Ain't nothing you can do to stop Christ from loving you. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Let's get in this thing a little bit more. So he goes on. Paul goes on and build that list out. Let me let me help you understand this list of this, this trouble, this hardship, this persecution, this famine, this nakedness, this danger, this sore. This list he builds out. He builds this out to help us understand there's no separation from his love. See, the trials of life, the troubles we're going to go through, we're going to go through troubles. We're going to have those things. It's real. The hardships, you're going to feel the suffering. You're going to feel the adversity that happens in our life. Hey, the persecution is going to bring people going to be hostile. There's hostility, ill will treatment. That can happen. That happened because you're faithful, not because you're faithless. Say no care nothing about no faithless people. He got you already. He done broke you down. But if you're walking in faithfulness, he's going to come out the end. There are also tests that happens to prove if you're going to walk by faith or not by sight. There's lack of clothing. It was nakedness. He said lack of clothes. There's some things that you feel like your needs not being met. But God going to clothe you because he's clothing you with love. And hey, man, even by the sword, he said, the sword can't separate you. Death can't separate you from the love of Christ. My God, why is that even so? How is that even possible? Because we are overcomers. The Bible says in John 16, 33, I've told you these things so that you may have peace. You need to have peace that his love is real. He said, listen, in this world, you will have trouble. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah, we're going to have it. You just got to understand. Oh, no, I ain't going to have trouble. I ain't going to speak trouble in my life. All you got to do is keep, keep living. Keep living. You just keep living. He says, here's the key of it, though. He says, you need to understand. Instead, he said, hey, man, I, I don't want trouble. No, we don't want trouble. But he said, I want you to take heart, though, about something. He says, take heart because I have overcome the trouble of the world. Come on, somebody. Oh, man. Paul, Paul brought this word. God brought this word. And Paul experienced the same stuff he preached on. You know, I read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 29 yesterday. But Paul remained confident that Christ still loved him because it started off with Christ going after Saul. Then he became Paul. So I want to ask you on this terrific Tuesday, are you ready to release your faith knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ? Oh, I know you're ready to say, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll keep it simple, saints. How we'll we keep it simple? By remembering to take heart that God still loves us and he is still for us. He's been for us for the before the since before the before the foundation of the world, y'all. My word tells us in Ephesians 1, chapter 4, it says, For in he said, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in this sight and love. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew it. He knew he already know, man. He know the whole, he, he got the whole script. He know our he know our time that we will live and our departure time. He always, he, he know that. The thing we need to understand, what we do in the, in the meantime, in the dash. See, they got, you got to be, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got a, a, a start date and you got an end date, okay? Hey, man, hey, what about the dash? What about the in-between? The in-between, we got to learn something for ourselves. Let me tell you what we need to learn. 
We need to learn. Remember when we start off, we start off early on, the Bible says this, who should separate us from the love of Christ? Okay, all right, now we talked about the what. Now let's just go back for a second because we're keeping it simple saying. Now what, what we need to understand, I got to give you a friendly reminder that Satan wants to try to make us the who that try to separate us from the love of Christ. Oh, not just other people. But I'm talking about now the person in the mirror. Oh, if you ain't careful, you can separate yourself for loving Christ. How so, Pastor Rob? Number one, by intentional sinning and keep us from loving God. If we keep sinning, if we keep doing what we know we should not be doing, it's going to separate us from loving Christ. Not him from loving us. Us going from loving him. Number two. If we stop picking up our cross and follow him. All my brothers and sisters. It's going to separate us. From our love from Christ. See. See the Bible says pick up your cross daily and follow him. In other words. You need to die to the cross. You need to die to them sins. Die to them flesh. Whatever that thing is driving you. You need to nail that thing. Nail that thing. Nail that thing to the cross. And pick that baby up. Come on somebody and walk with it. That's why this thing on my neck right here, it reminds me all the time. I said, Pastor, pick that cross up. Now, don't just wear the cross. I don't just wear jewelry just to wear. It's a purpose. It's in my heart. I want to pick it up before I cuss you out. I want to pick it up before I, hey, man, say something I regret. I want to pick it up, man, before I keep records around. I want to pick it up before I stop loving you. I want to pick it up. Hey, man, so, I don't, so I, don't, I don't have times when I just sit back and don't do nothing. Pick that thing up and walk, boy. Number three, disobeying of the spirit leading us keeps us from loving Christ. All that will separate us from our love. Never would that separate his love from us. Oh, Jesus, come on, somebody. Oh, I told you all, man, I got something. So what's to separate you from your love? You need to fill in the blanks. Heavenly Father, we bless you on this terrific Tuesday. We love you. We thank you, God, for the word of God just being unpacked. Oh, we thank you for the word that's just continue to help us to focus on what's important. Oh, God, I thank you that there's nothing that we can do to stop you from loving us. But, God, I am aware of some things that we can do to stop us from loving you. God, may that not be true in our lives. Help us to stop being, in, stop being intentional about sinning. God, I know that we are people of God. And Father, that it takes hard work to deny ourselves. But you said if we pick up our cross, oh God, and follow you, oh, what are the tools we have? Because then we know what would Jesus do? He would do us right. Oh, God, I pray that we have practiced. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Come on in, order our steps. Good afternoon, Holy Spirit. Come on, help keep leading us. And good evening, Holy Spirit. We thank you for leading us this morning, this afternoon. But we need that sweet rest. And we need to continue to walk by the Spirit. God, I pray that's a practice of ours. That we never forget, oh, God, that there's nothing can separate your love from us. But God, help us to be careful about allowing others allowing ourselves to separate our love from you. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Y'all just been kissed on this terrific Tuesday. That's right. That's right. Hey, brothers and sisters, be encouraged and know what God is doing in y'all lives. It's amazing, Brother Garrett. It's amazing what God is doing in y'all lives. Do nothing that's going to separate you, your love from him. Because if you do, I promise you this. Man, you will be in the wilderness and you'll be wandering and wondering what happened. And the key is people try to say, where's God? Where God at? God ain't left us. We leave him. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson. Practice not separating yourself from the love of God. I love y'all. I delight in the fact that we get to share God's word every day. May you have a terrific Tuesday. Take care of yourself.